So let's turn to Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. And then if you have the Dr. Rumman's reference Bible, it's on page 888. 888, 889. But we look at 889. So Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. So we'll look at four verses, but before that, um, appreciate the singing, appreciate the fellowship, um, and appreciate each and every one of you and the love of God that you have. So let's continue in good work and unity and in love, okay? So Proverbs chapter 24, so before we read the verses, I want to go over a little bit of the intro. So. Those of us who are outside of California, maybe you're able to purchase a home over here. It's very expensive to be a homeowner and whatnot. So I believe Pastor Walker, he owns a home, right? <laughs> I think it's two, two acre land, is it, Pastor? So over here in San Jose or San Francisco or Orange County, we can't really dream about it because yeah, right. it's too costly. But however, if you have a home or if you have a place of abode, if you don't take care of it, then what happens is there's a tendency for the home or the boat to deteriorate. Yeah, right. So also your health as well. If you don't take care of your body, what happens? It deteriorates, yeah. okay? And it is the same thing also for your spiritual health. So if you don't take care of your spiritual health, then it is gonna deteriorate as well. So probably you know personally, especially probably Pastor Walker and Pastor Gina and some of you here, or at least heard of people of spiritual giants. So when you think of spiritual, spiritual giants, who do you think of? Or what comes to your mind? Basically, those who have heat, those who are fervent, those who serve the Lord. They pray, they read the Bible, they study the Bible, they memorize the Bible, they evangelize, they try to win as many people unto the Lord Jesus Christ. So they are those who are faithful to the church and to the ministry. But unfortunately, Somewhere along the way, along the way, they began to neglect the things of God. So what happened? And little by little, little by little, they would backslide right. and skip church and stop serving the Lord altogether. And it catches all of us by surprise, but that could happen to any of us. So for some of you, if you are really honest with yourself, would admit that you are not where you once were spiritually. So. Um, so I wasn't able to make it last year due to exam and whatnot. Uh, but those of you who are here, how's your spiritual state compared to last year? Okay. So your passion and zeal that you had has been replaced with complacency and apathy. And the fact is, this is a far too common problem, especially in today's church, with so, so many temptations, yeah, Facebook, right. Instagram, Snapchat, internet, YouTube, Vimeo, and all those social media, yeah. right? So there's a tendency for you to be complacent for the things of God and for the word of God. So now let's look at Proverbs chapter 24, and we'll look at uh, five verses, five verses. So Proverbs chapter 24, starting from verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Brother Caleb, can you pray for the message, please?
Amen. So in this set of verses, Solomon recounts of a time where he journeyed past a local field and a vineyard. The field was grown over with thorns and nettles. So the wall that once protected this property was now broken down. In those days, agriculture was a very honorable profession, not as much today. Okay, farmers and vineyard husbandmen were well respected. Why? Because if you wanted to live, if you wanted to eat, you had to go to the farmers. But in this particular instance, the owner of this land earned no respect from Solomon. Solomon calls him slothful and lazy. He calls out the obvious neglect and proclaims the results of such slothfulness. And he says that poverty is imminent for the man who had abandoned his duty. So unfortunately, some of you are headed towards spiritual poverty, even though you're in camp. But even worse, some of you are already here. You heard the great preaching already. And some of you just come to the altar. And why? Why do you come to the altar for? Just because the preacher tells you to come to the altar, that you could get closer to God? Why do you come to the altar? Because of the peer pressure around you? Especially you young ones, peer pressure is big. I understand yes. that. But you cannot be influenced by peer pressure. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if you are saved, who is in you? Jesus Christ. Yeah. And if you are Jesus Christ, you are the majority. And then, so that is why you got to do what God wants you to do, Amen. what Jesus Christ wants you to do, and not what other people are doing. Okay? Point number one. Verse, verses 30 and 31. So let's look at the crisis of spiritual neglect. Crisis of spiritual neglect. So we see here of the man, of the, the owner, he he refused to give proper attention. He, pro he refused to give proper attention to the issue at hand. Mm -hmm. He was given a land, and then he didn't take care of it. So it will only get worse. Likewise, if you refuse to address the spiritual crisis in your life, crisis seems to be a strong word, different from just a little problem. Crisis. You got to consider your spiritual state as something huge. Good, yeah. Little, little oh, thing yeah. become a big thing. Wow. I remember. Brother Darren preaching, well, one of his uh, popular preachings, despise not to deal with small things, right? Small things. Small things become big things, okay? Your spiritual state doesn't get better automatically. It doesn't get automatically without you putting some effort into it. Singing yesterday, if everybody was just mumbling without any effort, then we wouldn't be in this position that we are in where the spirit is good. You'll yeah. be depressed, right? That is why you need to work at it. Work at it. Just because Jesus Christ is in you doesn't mean that he's going to just do everything and then you just lollygag and then you just sit and, and yeah. then just wait for the Holy Spirit to come and just for you to experience something. It doesn't work that way. No. You got to put, put your effort into it. Yeah. So hopefully this message, you'll just introspectively look at yourself. Introspectively look at yourself as what Pastor Walker mentioned yesterday, just think, 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 think ahead. It's planned. So if you will honestly gauge your spiritual condition, you will see that you have become slothful concerning the things of God, whatever that might be. Your spiritual life is withering away. Your heart has gotten hard, hard, hard. Some of you guys used to shout. Some of you guys used to have used to be more emotional. I'm not saying that emotion should, over, emotion should take control of your spiritual state, but out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You are indifferent toward the things of God. So simply, simply, simply speaking, you're in a backslidden state. You're in a backslidden state. Like the church of Ephesus, that, that was a great church. Obviously, all the previous churches compared to the Laodicean church, they were all great, right? But even the church of Ephesus, Jesus Christ had something against them. They left their first love. Yeah. They left their first love. And then you are in the midst of a spiritual crisis. 
So let's look at the duration of this crisis, duration of this crisis. So the field that Solomon mentioned was not consumed with weeds and nettles overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. So you buy a new, new house, I don't know, <laughs> except for Pastor Walker with a six inch rain or 12 inch rain, I get to actually see the grass growing in front of you. But in, but, but in general rule, those, those things don't happen, <laughs> okay? The vineyard was not overgrown in just a few days. The wall did not decay. Wall did not decay. I came here uh, two years ago. I still remember the preaching, the wall, right? The building of the wall. So the wall did not decay in a short period of time. An extended period of neglect, extended yeah, period of neglect caused all of these issues. So if you find yourself away from God, chances are things have gone unaddressed for some time. So you begin to stray, and step by step, you walk further and further away from the Lord. So the crisis of spiritual neglect begins when you take your eyes off of Jesus. Amen. If you take your eyes off of Jesus, then you are looking at something else or someone else. Right. This is followed by apathy and complacency, as I mentioned, concerning the things of God. Why? Because Jesus Christ is, is not your priority. Something else is priority. Yeah, right. The Amen. sin that God hates the most is what? Sin of idolatry, putting something ahead of him, whatever that might be. Hence, the natural result of this is returning to the things of the world. And the Bible says, and Pastor Walker quoted this, and the theme is, theme is basically uh, about the world and the temptation. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And there's an evangelist, David Wilkerson, he said, The river of neglect slowly carries you further and further away from the Lord. And the further downstream you go, the swifter and more dangerous that river becomes. You don't know it, but there are raging falls ahead. A place where there are focuses, forces, beyond your control, a place of no turning back, a place of shipwreck. If you have, if you have been to Niagara Falls, it's, it's majestic. But what happens in the town of Niagara Falls? If, you don't, if the pilot, okay, or if the uh, captain does not pay attention, then what might happen? Then it's going to just fall, okay? So spiritual negligence is an issue that has ruined many who are once faithful followers of Christ. There are some of you who noticed problems in the past, but you did not address them. Live all on the altar. Live all on the altar. It's either you're going to surrender to Jesus Christ 100% or you're not. There's no, there's no half and half. If you're half and half, then you are a part of the Laodicean church. Right? Just because we are living in the Laodicean church age doesn't mean that we have to be part of that movement. Yes, sir. We could be the part of the Philadelphia yeah, church. Yeah, yeah. We could be part of the Philadelphia church age. Why? Because we have the book that they, yes, they have, yeah. the King James Bible. Amen. Amen. So let's look at the discernment of this crisis. Discernment. Either the owner of this estate didn't realize or simply didn't care about the pitiful shape of his vineyard and fields. But Solomon noticed it immediately. So some Christians today either do not realize their backslidden and condition, or their heart has become so hard that they just don't care. Yeah. Do you care? Yeah. Do you really care? Do you care for your church? Do you care for Bible Baptist Church International? Do you care for Calvary Baptist? Do you care for San Jose Bible Baptist Church? Just because others don't care doesn't mean that you should care less. Amen. When those things happen, you must care more. Amen. It takes effort. Amen. It takes effort. It's a group effort. Some Christians today either do not realize their backslidden condition or their heart has become so hard. From the outside looking in, the brethren can tell that something is not right. Yeah. Something right. is not right. So you may have been suffering from spiritual negligence for some time, and you, don't, you just don't see it. If you are in the midst of this crisis, thankfully, there is help for you today. 
you are here, there's a reason. That's right. You can get right today. Amen. But you must first realize that you are in the midst of the crisis. For some of you, you may not be suffering from spiritual negligence. Praise the Lord for that. But there is a lesson for you to learn in the story of the slothful man. The lesson is that you must take the pro proper precautions to guard yourself. In medicine, prevention is always better than the cure. Listen, prevention is always better than the cure. Why is that such an important statement? Because there might not be a cure for whatever that disease that you might contract or anyone else might contract. That is why prevention is, is the best, is the cure. So the cause of spiritual neglect. So let's look at the cause. After pondering the situation for a moment, obviously Solomon saw the source of neglected field and vineyard. The same things that cause his estate to be broken down and overgrown are the same things that will cause spiritual neglect in the life of the believer. So for number one, idleness. Idleness causes spiritual neglect. Verse 30 says, I went by the field of the slothful. Slothful. Idleness is defined as abstinence from labor or employment. Basically, not working. No work. In this case, the owner of the land was idle. Simply, he was lazy. Today, if you are not actively serving the Lord, if you are not involved in Christian service, if you have become inactive and idle, there is guarantee. There is guarantee that trouble is coming your way. There is a guarantee. Prime example, King David. Everyone knows King David. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, we are told that at the time the kings went forth to battle, did David go together with the captains? Did David go together with the soldiers? No. The Bible says that David tarried still at Jerusalem. He sent his captains, servants, soldiers to war, but he remained at the palace. David did not set out looking for trouble. He did not. He didn't know that he was going to be getting into deep trouble. Yeah. He did not plan to walk away from the Lord. But guess what? It happened. It happened. Idleness was the beginning of slippery slope that affected him for the rest of his life. You read Book of Psalms. Obviously, Book of Psalms is the best book to read when we are going through the heartaches and all that, but a lot of it could have, been, could have been avoided if David would have gone to the battle. The same thing for you. When it's time to come to church, you got to come to church. When, you gotta, when, you, when there's visitation, when there's street preaching, when, when it's over 115 degrees, 150 degrees, uh, three weeks ago, I think, on Friday, in Orange County, this never happened. It was over 115 degrees. And then, wow. and then some of us were waiting for the text, kakao talk. All right, all right, Pastor Kim, waiting, waiting, cancel. But all of a sudden, there was no cancellation. So I, was, I, so I just, after work, I just went. And then Woo! I saw the faithful brethren preaching yes. on the streets Amen. and all that. Amen. The instant season, out of season. Yes, sir. When, whenever there's ministry, you will not regret it. You might be complaining, you might be giving all the excuses while you're driving, but as long as you get to the destination, That's good you'll be all right. Amen. You'll be all right. Amen. And also, in our church, after street preaching, we, we go out to eat as well. So yeah, that's, right. that's also a good incentive as well. <laughs> good incentive as well. So David, a man after God's own heart, became an adulterer and a murderer. He is known as a man after God's own heart, but he is also known as, a, known as an adulterer and a murderer. And that we'll, be knowing of, we'll be knowing about David of, of those two titles, of those two positions throughout all eternity as well. Thy word is set in heaven forever, right? So he pro his problems or originated with idleness. The trouble began when David neglected his duty. What about you? Are you actively serving the Lord or, are you, or, or have you become idle? Do you let Pastor Jin Kim do everything in the church? Do you let uh, Mr. J do everything in the church? Right? 
another factor, another cause, ignorance. Ignorance. So verse 30 again. And by the vineyard of the man, void of understanding. Void of understandings. Solomon says that, says that this man was lacking in sense. This man who had neglected his property was steadily ruining himself. So verse 34. Proper, poverty was tra tra traveling his way, but he did not see it. Lack one and poverty was drawing near, and when it appeared, it would be too late. Too yeah. late. Yeah. God has given us many chances, but right. we cannot take advantage Amen. to use the chances that God has given to us for our own occasion. Right. Because one of these days, light rejected becomes what? Yeah. Lightning. Light rejected becomes lightning. His poverty would sneak up on him like a thief in the night. He was oblivious to the things that were obvious to anyone who passed through his estate. Many today are willfully ignorant of their spiritual condition. Do you know your spiritual condition? Do you really know? Yeah, come on. Have you ever checked? Come on. Not only during the Lord's, Lord's Supper, time for the introspection, but every day, every single day, Right. I die daily. Do you die daily? Do you tell your flesh? You're not going to reign over me today. Amen. You're in the grave. Many people refuse to examine themselves. They refuse to consider the consequences of their neglect. They believe that they are okay spiritually. That's dangerous. The excuses and attempts to justify their neglect are plentiful. And they are willfully ignorant of the spiritual poverty that is just around the corner. There's no excuse for ignorance. No excuse for ignorance. And another thing, this is a big one. Indifference. Indifference causes spiritual neglect. The owner of the estate, he probably took good care, care of the field. He probably took good care of his property and also took care of the wall. But what happened? As time passed by, Something came into his life where he started to become indifferent. Oh, it's okay. It's just a little weed. It's just a little thorn. Uh, it's okay. It's still 90, 90%, 90% grass. And the walls, I just, piece, only one piece of the stone is missing. It's okay. But what happens? What happens? Total decay. So the owner of the estate, he knew what needed to be done. He knew what, what needed to be done. And some of you guys know what you need to do. Amen. What you Come need on. to do to get back. Amen. You've been in the church for a long time Come on. that you should know what you need to do. Right. right? Three main things at least. Read your Bible, pray, and witness. At least those three main things. And then other things as well. So the same is true for a backslidden Christian. If you are suffering from spiritual neglect, you have walked away from your Christian duty. Some of you have walked away from specific ministries. In the past, you cleared the fields. In the past, you planted vineyards. In the past, you constructed walls to protect the harvest. But somewhere along the line, something happened. Something just happened. You became indifferent. You know what the Lord has called you to do, but you refuse to do your duty because of your idleness, or maybe because of your ignorance, or because of your indifference, you are suffering from spiritual negligence. Yeah. Solomon had a warning for this slothful man, and God also has a warning for you. So now, let's look at the consequences of the spiritual neglect. Verse 34, I mentioned this already. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Solomon declares that the consequences of this man's neglect would be swift, unexpected, and severe. He paints the picture of a robber coming in unexpectedly and attacking this man in his slumber. The end result of this neglect would be great poverty. How many of you want to live in great poverty? How many of you guys actually experienced poverty or actually gone through a place of poverty? Like Skid Row, right? And also in San Francisco, yeah, due to the high living of cost, it's getting bad over there. Even though the weather is like almost perfect, 
that people in tents, people in syringes, feces everywhere. Yeah. Poverty. Don't think that that can't happen to you, even physically. Yeah. But yeah. well, obviously, it has already happened to you spiritually. Yeah. It affected this man's field and his vineyard and his stone walls. The negligence in your spiritual life will affect several areas in your life as well. So let's look at his productivity. So Solomon says that the fields were grown over with thorns and nettles. If a crop had been planted, it would have been choked by the weeds and nettles. The estate owner had not been productive. He had not removed those things that were detrimental to the harvest. Good. Detrimental to the harvest. Good. That's good. Whatever those things might be, I could think of the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5. Oh, not just Facebook, not just Instagram. How about pride? Yeah. Right? How about jealousy? Good. Like those things. When you neglect your own spiritual life, you cannot be productive for the Lord. Jesus said, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Laborers are few. One reason that the laborers are few is due to many people are fast asleep. Fast asleep. Another, spiritual neglect affects your peers. Affects your peers. It's, it's either you are a help to the brethren, or you're a burden to the brethren. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sure that this estate owner will tell you his neglect of affected no one but himself. No one but himself. He kept to himself and bothered no one. So what was the harm in his slothfulness? The weeds and nettles that consumed his field would eventually cause trouble for his neighbors. How? Yeah. Their seeds would be carried by the wind into wow. the surrounding fields. Now you guys know of uh, species that are introduced to certain regions and then, and then that region becomes bad, right? I think, uh, especially in the Everglades, certain fishes were introduced. Some, some, some of them they smuggled the uh, fish from, I think, from Asia. They were somehow able to bring it and then basically let them loose in the uh, Everglades and it's, it's been bad. So spiritual neglect cannot be contained within the Christian. The seeds will spread and affect your peers. God has placed you in a position to have an impact on others. Amen. Like Jesus Christ, he had an impact on the both the saved and the lost. And Romans 14, 7 says, For none of us liveth to himself, and no one dies to himself. Whether we like it or not, whether you think that you're a hermit and put yourself in a room and lock yourself, you have an impact on someone in your life. Mm -hmm. Charles Spurgeon said, if we are not blessing our neighbors by the lives we live, we are an injury and an evil to them. Spiritual neglect affects your profitability as well. The vineyard and field should have supplied this man with food and drink that would sustain him and his family. They would have also provided necessary income to support them throughout the year. But the fields were empty, the ground was fallow, and the vines were bare. Jesus Christ did not simply call his followers to bear fruit. Jesus Christ told us that the Father is glorified when we bear much fruit. God expects us to bear not just fruit. God expects us to bear much fruit, much fruit. So look at your life. Examine. You may examine the fields of your heart. Examine the fields of your life. In order to bear much fruit, you need to bear the fruit of the Spirit. And the spiritual neglect affects your protection. So sometime in the past, this man erected a wall to protect the harvest, but now he has been idle for so long that the wall is crumbling. The devoted Christian builds walls in his life. These walls indicate boundaries that are not to be crossed. What does that mean? Conviction. You, you used to have a strong sense of conviction about the Bible, about your faith, of the doctrine, of the Bible believers, of the preacher. You have conviction. Whenever someone will say something bad about a church, or if there's someone who says, who take the name of the Lord in vain, you will approach them. But now what happens is that that conviction that you had is gone. It's gone. 
yeah, the, what they're doing, what they're, them taking the nail lore is wrong, but, but still, they're just sinners, right? They don't know better. So you live it, live it that way. But before, you had the heart to just want to serve the Lord and to just please Him. So are there broken down walls? Are there broken down walls in your life? They are broken down and crum crumbling because you are asleep spiritually. Seeds of wickedness and sin now consume your life, such as, as I mentioned, internet, social media, worldly music, and other things. Harmful nettles have overtaken your field, and as this man would soon learn, this is an adversary plotting and attacking. And there is no wall to protect you from the danger. Why? Because your wall has already crumbled. Spiritual poverty is on its way, and for some, it is already at the door. You have neglected the fields and the vineyards. The walls are broken down. The time for sowing has passed. It is harvest time, and you will reap a bitter crop. Galatians 6, 7, the law of sowing and reaping. Be not deceived, guys, not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So we'll not just end it there, but we also got to go for the cure, right? The cure for spiritual neglect. The problem that this man experienced came from the fact that he valued sleep over labor, valued pleasures more than laboring. So the only hope he had to reclaim his property was to wake from his sleep. Wake, wake. And that is the only thing that will prevent you from enduring spiritual poverty. You always need to stay in a wake for uh, sober, uh, position, be circumspect, circumspect of your surroundings. And this is the only thing that will prevent you. So what is the cure for spiritual neglect? It's to awake from your slumber, it's to wake up, it's to be sober. The Christian life is an active life. The golden rule, Pastor Shrine mentioned this, as Christians, we are, we are to do unto others as we would have others do unto us. Mm -hmm. It has to be active life. It is a life of service. It is a life that requires attention and labor. But somewhere along the way, many have gone to sleep. For some of you, your work for the Lord is idle. Your support for the church is waning. Your love for others has grown cold. Your heart has grown hard. Mm -hmm. Your adversary is planning his attack and you are asleep. Devil, as a roaring lion, he never rests. And, wow. and for some of you, he has already eaten your life. That's true. And for some of you, your home is in the situation that it is in, in a negative way, because you are asleep spiritually. Mm -hmm. The world is getting worse and worse. Wickedness abounds. Sin is accepted. Jesus is rejected. Jesus is mocked. Evil is celebrated, yep. and God is blaspheming. All because too many Christians have been sleeping for too long. Good, That's true. That's true, brother. Right now, hopefully, God, God is able to reach your heart. That through, this, through the word of God, the alarm has been ringing in your heart mm -hmm. for you to wake up. Amen. Amen. So the thing is, are you going to wake up or are you going to sleep? Yeah. It's either or. If you say you're going to just be half, half sleep and then just be half awake, <laughs> then you're, 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 you're asleep. Okay? It's either you'll be awake or, or you'll be sleeping. Okay? So what is, your dis what is your choice? What is your decision going to be? Okay. So let's go to the Lord in prayer.